In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we gather now on the third Sunday in ordinary time. Let us pause now to truly prepare our hearts to celebrate these wondrous and sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come now in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Teach me. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As Christians, there are only four documents that we call Gospels. The Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Luke, and the Gospel of John. When we call these books Gospels, we are saying that they give us the life and the teaching of Jesus Christ in a way that no other documents in the history of the world have. Through them, we hear the voice of Jesus in a unique way. They even have a special place in the entire Bible because they reveal to us the very face of the Son of God. And that is why we stand up when they are read at Mass, unlike the other readings that we sit down for. The word gospel literally means good news or glad tidings. The work in Greek, evangelion, refers to something very specific. In Jesus' time, cities and villages only received news by special messengers who would be sent out throughout the countryside. Many times those messages had to do with wars that kings and emperors were raging. So in today's gospel, when Jesus tells the people to believe in the good news, they know exactly what he's talking about. The kingdom of God is at hand was an announcement of a great victory to come not by a king or an emperor, but by God himself. God was about to come down from heaven, defeat his enemies, and rule over the world forever. 2,000 years later, we know that God did come down from heaven in the person of Jesus Christ. On the cross, he defeated the ultimate enemies of God, sin and death. And from heaven, he rules over all the earth, until he comes again in glory. And that is the good news that we continue to proclaim to the world today, that God has indeed won the victory through his death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Now Jesus tells the people that before they believe in the good news, they have to do something else. They have to repent. And like the word gospel, the word repent in Greek, metanoia, has a specific meaning. It literally means a change of heart and mind. It is what happens when someone becomes aware of a new reality and realizes that he or she will have to make changes because of it. An example would be going to the doctor and, and finding out that you have cancer. It is a diagnosis that would rock your world. Everything in your life would have to change because of it. It affects the choices you make, how you relate to others, and how you plan for the future. Just so, when Jesus tells the people to repent because the kingdom of God is at hand, he is telling them that they have to make some radical changes in their lives to adjust to this new reality. Something new is happening. The old ways will no longer work. Now that Jesus has brought the kingdom of God into the world, everything will have to change. And that is really what St. Paul is getting at in today's second reading, because we believe that Jesus truly is coming again. And we now realize that this world and everything in it only has limited value. We cannot put all our hopes in this life. As St. Paul puts it, the world in its present form is passing away. So we marry, but we realize that marriage and family life, as good as it is, cannot give us our ultimate fulfillment. We weep and rejoice, knowing that both good and bad times come and go. We go about our daily business of buying and selling with a sense that there are deeper, more important matters to attend to, like daily prayer, worship of God, and serving those in need. The kingdom of God that Jesus brings means we have to shift our thinking and change our behavior. There is more to this life than what the world can truly offer. Today's gospel also reflects this truth. When Jesus approaches Simon and Andrew, invites them to follow him, he doesn't give them the option of keeping their jobs as fishermen. He's not inviting them to follow him only on the weekends when they're not working. No, Jesus actually asks them to give up their livelihoods. They have to leave their families. Now that Jesus has showed up, they can't go back to living the way they did before. Everything has to change. And the same is true for us. We cannot follow Jesus part-time. Religion cannot just be a hobby for us. It really has to be the center of everything that we say and do. Maybe we're not called to leave our jobs like Simon and Andrew were, but we must bring our faith into the workplace, into the world. We strive to be more understanding, compassionate, Christ-like with the people that God places in our daily lives. And even if we're not called to leave our family like the sons of Zebedee were, Jesus must be the very center of our homes. Every choice we make, whether it is about how we raise our children or how we spend our money, should reflect our belief in the good news of Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. This world and everything in it is passing away. The only thing that has lasting value is faith in the love that God has for us. We gather here today to proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He has won victory over sin and death. With that in mind, we must reflect on our own lives and make the changes that we know we need to make. How is God calling us to recalibrate our attitudes and our behaviors, to welcome him into our hearts, our homes, our schools, and our workplaces? What must, we, what must we do to put God at the center of everything that we say and everything we do? Amen. And together now we profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Aware of God's quiet presence at work in our lives, we humbly place our needs before him. For all clergy, may the Holy Spirit continue to sanctify and purify them in Christ's name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may all be drawn to Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For communities around the world living in fear of war and violence, especially those in the Middle East and Ukraine, that the God of peace and justice will comfort and protect them in these dark hours. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that more young men and women will respond generously to God's call to serve the church as priests, deacons, and consecrated religious, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may we be given the grace to recognize the gifts we are offered in this liturgy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, may they be shepherded by our compassionate God into the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O gracious God, giver of all good gifts, we offer to you these prayers today as we offer all that we have and all that we are through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And may that peace now enter your hearts and your homes and all with whom you share peace today. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, Grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer now for Father Baker's canonization. Lord, Lord you, you gave, gave us your servant, servant Nelson, Nelson Baker, Baker, as an example of service to the poor, homeless, and young. young. By Father, Father Baker's ardent, ardent concern for those in need, need Inflame our hearts and lives with compassion for the poor, justice for the oppressed, hope for the troubled, and courage to those in doubt. We pray through the intercession of Our Lady of Victory, if it be your will, that your servant, Nelson Baker, may one day be canonized. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Olvi's mission is to continue Father Baker's legacy of caring by promoting devotion to Our Lady of Victory and providing support for children, adults, and families in need. To help us carry on Father Baker's ministries, please go to olvcharities.org and click the donate button in the upper right corner. May God bless you.